Hello and welcome to the Will Preach for Food podcast. Merry Christmas. I'm Doug. I'm the pastor of Faith Lutheran Church. We're based out of Shelton, Washington in a congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Faith is a beloved, inclusive community. We're striving to grow closer to and more like Jesus for the sake of the world. You can learn more about faith at our website, www.faithshelton.org. I want to thank you for making this podcast a part of your day. Many of us have had to adjust our holiday plans this year because of COVID. A lot of folks this year are stranded, far from family. Christmas decorations remain in the closet. Long-time family traditions put on hold. Folks from faith are still lamenting that we didn't get to have our annual holiday bazaar last month. I mean, folks are going through serious lefts of withdrawal. But in all seriousness, we miss our friends. We miss our family gatherings. We miss our Christmas Eve candlelight worship as a faith community. Well, the original story of Christmas is a story about a young family forced to travel over the holidays. They get stranded in a strange town far from family and friends. They rely on the hospitality and kindness of a community of shepherds to survive their circumstances. The couple gains a family. The community experiences the grace of God. So this Christmas Eve, we once again read the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2. I hope today's message gives you a fresh perspective on a familiar story. And I hope I can leave you with three takeaways that will help you both experience and spread the joy of Christmas this year, no matter where you are. As always, you can access the transcript of this podcast and other worship resources at our website. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day, wake to the brightness of his glory. We pray this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter, beginning at the first verse. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. Now, this was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He's the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. This is the traditional Christmas story from Luke chapter 2. It starts with the emperor declaring a census that requires everyone to go register in their hometown because sometimes governments just like to make it hard for poor people to register. Joseph and Mary live in Nazareth. Mary is preggers, but Joseph's hometown is Bethlehem, 90 miles to the south, on the other side of Jerusalem. He gets time off from work and they take the trip, but the trip unfortunately bumps right up against Mary's due date and wouldn't you know it, her water breaks just outside of Bethlehem. They duck into the first shelter they can find, an old animal shed. The place smells to high heaven, but the straw is dry and the walls provide a break from the wind. They find some rags in the corner, kind of clean up the mess, 
find a couple cleaner ones, and they use that to wrap the baby up tight. And they lay him in some straw in a feed box, and the baby cries, and Mary weeps, and Joseph mutters. But while all this is going on, there's actually commotion going out in the hills outside of town. The shepherds, a Christmas choir concert, an angel announcing that the Messiah of God has come to earth and that this is its sign, a baby wrapped in rags in an animal shed on the outskirts of Bethlehem. The shepherds hightail it toward town, and sure enough, in the barn back behind the old Johnson place, there is Mary and Joseph and a baby wrapped in rags and lying in a manger. That's the gospel story, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. Now here are what the next few verses, 17 through 24, say. It says that when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Then on the eighth day, when it came time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping what, with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Quirt, that's what it says in verse 21. But then there's still another five weeks before they can go home. You see, they're required to go to the temple in Jerusalem when the kiddo's about six weeks old. They have to offer a sacrifice of two pigeons, one's for the dedication of a firstborn son, one for the purification for Mary after childbirth. Nope, a return to Nazareth would be dangerous and costly. They were stranded in Bethlehem. Thank God for those shepherds and their families. These shepherds working the night shift, shout out, by the way, to everyone who works the night shift, These shepherds working the night shift had seen the angel of the Lord. Don't be afraid, the angel said. God is near, the angel said. The sign of God's promise is a newborn baby wrapped in rags, lying in a food box. And sure enough, that's exactly what they found. And then it says that the shepherds went home. They spread the word about what they had seen and heard. Honey, you'll never guess what happened. Wives and siblings and parents are awoken from their slumber to report to reports of angels and saviors and a baby in a manger. I can imagine at least one shepherd's wife responding with an incredulous, and you left them there in the barn? I can imagine two other women getting dressed and heading for the Johnson place with some food and some water, some clean diapers and a fresh blanket. Oh, you poor thing, you must be exhausted. And they bring Mary into a a dwelling with a fire and some warm broth. And the baby is cleaned up and changed and passed around and rocked to sleep. Joseph is given a glass of spiced wine and he falls asleep on the sofa. At the morning market, the word spreads about this homeless family and the angel visit. Another neighbor prepares a small guest room and won't take no for an answer. The women dote over Mary and the baby. They show her how to nurse, how to change a diaper, how to wrap the baby in a single blanket. They brush Mary's hair and tell her that she's a beautiful mother and that everything's going to be okay. The men congratulate Joseph, and and they probably tease him about who the real father is. When the time comes for Mary and Joseph to go to Jerusalem, weeks later, they're told to keep the blanket and the diapers. And everyone had pitched in and gave them some traveling money, including enough to buy pigeons that they needed for the sacrifice at the temple. After that, the Bible says in verses uh, 39 and 40 at the end of chapter 2, when Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. Now, is that exactly how it happened in Bethlehem? Well, I don't know. 
But I like the image of the baby Jesus being passed around among doting strangers, aunts and siblings and mothers that he will never meet and never forget. Families are forged out of the love, not the blood. So for me, growing up, church was always my extended family, no matter where we lived. And the same held true when we had kids. As infants and toddlers, both Ben and Hannah were passed around, doted on, cared for, loved, and surrounded by dozens of aunts and uncles, grandparents, and friends. I don't know how much of it they remember, but I remember. So I doubt that Jesus would necessarily remember his Bethlehem family, but it still shaped his life, and maybe it shaped his understanding of what a family is. There's a scene in the Bible years later Jesus is being criticized for not paying enough attention to his birth mother and his younger brothers. But Bethlehem had taught him a broader definition of family. He said, my my brothers and my mother, they're the ones who hear God's word and put it into practice. God's grace is inclusive. Everyone is part of the family of God. Bethlehem taught him that. So three takeaways. First, like Mary and Joseph, no matter where you are, however far from home you are, how overwhelming the circumstances, may you have the faith to trust God to guide you and protect you and provide you with what you need. This Christmas, be open to what God might birth in you and be ready to receive gifts given by strangers. Second, like the shepherds, may you hear the good news of great joy. Unto you is born this day a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Love has come to earth for you. This Christmas, may you see for yourself what God is doing in the world and spread that news regarding all that you have seen and heard. Third, like the people of Bethlehem, may you show hospitality to strangers and neighbors stranded during the holidays, because by doing so, You welcome the Christ child into your heart and into your home. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth with goodwill to all. Amen. Thanks for listening to this week's We'll Preach for Food podcast. I'd love to tell you more about the promise of Christmas, God's purpose for you, or about the gloriously imperfect, beloved, and inclusive family that is Faith Lutheran Church. You can go to our website, faithshelton.org, subscribe to this podcast, go to our YouTube channel, or like us on Facebook. Thanks, Chaz, Emily, for your technical assistance with this podcast. And I'll send you off today with the traditional Christmas blessing from American author Robert Louis Stevenson. O God, our loving Father, help us to rightly remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the song of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, and the worship of the wise men. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Deliver us from evil by the blessing that Christ brings. Teach us to be merry with clear hearts. May the Christmas morning make us happy to be thy children, and the Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts forgiving and forgiven, for Jesus' sake. Amen.